In this lessons episode, you'll explore power-ups, which are key habits and mental models for success. Learn the value of an apprentice mentality, iterating on ideas, and embracing endurance to overcome challenges. Discover why mindset is key to thriving in both personal and professional life. Now let's break down some of the lessons that you've learned over your career um, that you speak about in this book. And uh, there's there's a few, di- like there's, I can't remember, there's a, what, there's 15 different chapters and there's a whole, and there's like a lesson per chapter. Um, so let's, you know, for the value of people listening, pick your favorite ones that you want to, that you want to speak on. I don't know uh, which ones you'd like to touch on, but I'm sure there's a few favorites that you love. Um, and we can go into those and unpack what those are and how those can help you succeed. Yeah, totally. So there's 15 power-ups in the book. And power-ups to me are, again, like I mentioned, they're either habits that you cultivate or mental models, um, such as understanding things like second-order consequences and things like that. They're different tools that you can go around collecting, just like you would in the gaming world. Um, now, I talk about 15 in the book, but it's, it's, it's just the very beginning. There's a lot more than 15 power-ups in the world. And you have to. there's positive power-ups and there's negative power-ups, right? If you eat too much fast food, then you know you you end up uh, you know your body goes in a different direction, right? And so, um, w- one of the chapters is titled thievery, and I think there's a cog- there's a lot of cognitive dissonance around it because us as human beings, we like to think I'm original, right? We we hold this thing to be very sacred, and I think it's important to understand that even Apple, the most valuable company in the world, you know, when Steve Jobs came out with the mouse. And the graphical user interface, guess who he stole it from? Stole it from Xerox, right? And so he, even him, he said in life, everything is just a remix. And when you think about SpaceX and, and Elon Musk's rockets coming back to Earth, um, the, the the rocket design is still fundamentally the, the same foundational design as from the, the 50s or the 60s, right? Uh, the big difference is they come back to, 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 to Earth. Um, and so... You know, Picasso himself has said that, you know, everything in life, um, I mean, great artists steal, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh my God, I don't want to steal. I don't want to be a thief. But like reality is those of you listening to this podcast right now, you're trying to get at least one nugget from it and you're trying to apply it to your life. And so life is just, you're you're going around collecting all these nuggets and then maybe you're making a 10 to 30% iteration, right? Like that iteration for bringing the rocket back to earth, that's a massive iteration, right? It's not easy to do by any means, but he had to combine, you know, Elon and his entire team had to think about, okay, you know, how, what are all the dynamics that are at play and how can we make this work, right? So there's a game within itself there. Um, so my point is, you know, I think um, the, the sooner people let go of the pressure of having to be completely original, the easier it's going to be for people to kind of move on and make make the the best version of themselves, which is in itself, you know, very original. We're all original. We're all kind of one of one. Yeah, and I would say that um, to constantly think that the things that we have to do in life or take to market or like let's let's look at it from an entrepreneurship lens. If you want to if you want to do something that's slightly outside of whatever your nine to five is, or if you already are trying to take a product to market. Um, there's there's sort of two ways you can go about it, right? You can you can go for that that blue ocean where you're taking something to market that's never ever been done before, or you can just iterate in an existing market and, and be wildly successful. So there's something to be said for not making life harder than it has to be for you either, right? And you'll still be successful, you'll still be revered, and you'll still be like you're not you're not like you said not thieving in a bad way, but just iterating on what people have already done. And I think that's something that also probably lends uh, a little bit of insight to your apprentice mentality, learning from others as well. It's not obviously uh, in the same context, not thieving, but it's not like just learning and iterating, but it's also making sure that you don't have to um, go through all the failures and uh, that other people have already learned from, right? Yep, totally. I I mean, so it's, um, you know, the, the, the apprentice mentality is really just, um, you know, understanding that you're never going to be too high on yourself or you're never going to be too low on yourself. Um, it's, it's understanding that, you know, you can have strong views, but you should just hold them very weakly. And uh, if you're presented with new data, new information to be, be ready to adjust on the fly, because the more ego that you, that you develop, the more, um, the more you're going to be stuck in your ways, but the world's evolving so quickly, especially with all the stuff we see with, with technology. So it's so apprentice uh, apprentice uh, apprentice mentality. I don't want to get it twisted. So 
it's not it's not just you going out towards and going finding mentors and getting people to help you out it's truly i understand what you're saying now so it's it's just having this this humble this humble persona that allows you to accept learnings from other people right it's more than just yeah. finding mentors okay Okay, I, I mean, like, you know, when I, so for example, I've been hanging out a lot in Clubhouse, but when I, when I go into the rooms, you know, I, I try to listen and I try to be the, the, the idiot in the room, right? So yeah. when I approach things from an idiot kind of, uh, or apprentice, I'm not going to say, you know, apprentices are idiots, but like, I'll, I'll take it even further, right? I'll use an extreme word yeah. and say, oh, look, I, I'm not so smart. Um, I have a lot to learn. But, you know, sometimes I'll see people join the room and there's a lot of bravado. There's a lot of ego. And you can tell they're closed off to listening. They're closed off to learning. It's it's my way or the highway. In some cases, they might be large influencers. Um, and, you know, but, you know, they haven't learned to kind of uh, maybe they might have had a, the apprentice mentality at one point, but they haven't dialed it back and, and, and kept that habit going. Right. They haven't cultivated or or um, more so refreshed that habit over and over. Yeah. And, and that, I think that the most successful people, at least the people that I've found in my life that are the most successful, that could be worth multi-millions or billion dollar plus um, in total net worth, those are the people, like when you do speak to them, when they constantly have successes and wins, you can see that the second they, they implant themselves into, into a group, they, they immediately just like, they just want as much information as possible. And I think that the people you're speaking about, I think it's probably a little bit more <laughs> Um, prolific on Clubhouse just because if, if Clubhouse in some of the rooms, not all of them, but on, on some of them, and I know you're like, I watch all your stuff. I follow you on social. You're always on Clubhouse, always speaking about Clubhouse. I think that there's a lot of people that kind of flex on Clubhouse a little bit more yeah. than they should. Um, and that doesn't help anybody, right? It's, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to help them, but I think they put a ceiling yeah. on their success a hundred percent because I mean, yeah. I love sharing the numbers, right? You know, what I make yeah. Clubhouse, but I don't do it to flex. And I always try to preface that, like, this is not to brag. This is just saying, hey, this is what's possible, but it also takes this amount of time to get there. Um, so I, I come from a position of trying to be transparent, but teaching as well. But I think to your point, when you're just flexing about, oh, you have, you know, you bought this company, uh, this this public brand over here, and then you 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 took this company public or whatever. Um, you know, how helpful is that really? Or are you just is that more ego than anything? Like, how helpful is that generally? Yeah, it's, it's not going to help many people who who want to do something more with their life or you know start a side hustle. Like, they're not. Most people are not trying to take a company public. Most people are just trying to do better at what they're doing. Right? They you know maybe uh, IPOing is a plan for some, but I think the majority of people would learn more from. A chat with you than somebody who just lists off the companies to take them public or you know the the success they've achieved is great it provides credibility but it doesn't actually offer tactical or tangible insight or lessons that somebody can take away right like you mentioned that nugget people listen to a podcast they want a nugget they want something they can take away and they can do tomorrow really um if you just keep flexing it's not going to help anybody and i think that that's right. something that those are you know it's almost like those are the people, even if they have had success, I, I prefer not to learn from them just because I know that where their head's at, where their mind's at is not in the place where they're going to accept other points of view, accept other opinions. And actually it's funny because you see people that were wildly, wildly successful, you know, the monetarily successful or, or what otherwise. And over the past 20 years, they become irrelevant, right? Those are the people that just, they, they had success and they became completely irrelevant because I think they never had this. I've never heard a frame this way, but apprentice, uh, mentality. Um, that's a very, very, very smart point. Now these, are, these, these level ups, these, these power ups, are these mindsets or are some of them uh, actual, uh, behavioral items, um, or like daily routine items that you can, that you can do to sort of accomplish that 1% day over day. Yeah, some of it is is mindset. So we have one on endurance, right? So that's really you know how much pain can you take because any level of success you're hoping to achieve, uh, you know, pain is a prerequisite, right? I, I think people tend to run away from the pain, but reframing your mind into running towards it and getting through it, right? You know, there's a lot of people like when you're thinking about starting a new business or or, or whatever, um, you know, you go through imposter syndrome. That's part of you have to endure that. There's the startup, the the startup kind of, you know, that that one or two or three years that it takes to get things going, right? Just things don't work out the right way initially. Things don't go as planned. 
uh, maybe some type of pandemic hits, like just things don't work out, right? But it's you have to learn to endure. Um, and so I, I learned a lot of that from from poker, um, having to endure. Like sometimes you'll have swings where you lose for could be three, six, 12 months at a time, and you just have to learn to deal with it. Um, and then be patient and, and choose how you how you react to that, right? So um, some of it's mindset, some of it would be, you know, habits. Uh, but, you know, it's what they say, the, the, the cliche you hear over and over is, um, you know, oh, it's all about mindset at the end of the day. You hear it from a lot of kind of self-development people. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's actually true. It, it's it's how you're programmed at the end of the day. That's how I like to think of it. You know, what type of information are you, are you um, consuming? And that's really going to program you. That's going to guide you. Who are you hanging out with, right? That is your programming. And that's going to set how you take you decide to do things in the future. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this valuable, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you want to dive deeper into this conversation, check out the links in the description to watch the full episode. See you in the next one. Yeah.